Well, Adam is here somewhere. I don't know if he's like, I'm not very confident that a film editor can't figure out how to turn on his camera right now, but, um, Got it. or whatever. So, oh, there you are. <laughs> I do. I have it. I'm here. I made it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad you're here. I don't have terribly long and the, I don't like to edit a lot. So I usually just like to do an introduction and get started so we don't waste any, you know, valuable, Time. My dog will shut um, up in a minute too. Your wife. <laughs> I don't know if you heard her barking. Somebody's delivering a package, so like she barks, but she's. I, I actually didn't hear her, and I know my dog. Like, um, like he's like, "Oh, you're about ready to zoom." Okay, well, let me start whining. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There she uh, is. Good girl. Yeah. I uh, no, I'm just waiting for the uh, the truck to pull up and start you have them start working on the building any second I, that usually happens unannounced like when i'm doing a zoom chat too of so. course <laughs> yeah um so adam you did not go to ic3 correct i was not able to go no unfortunately not i'm working on 911 right now and i couldn't get the uh the time away so we were, okay we were in uh editor's cut so Unfortunately, that's uh, that's what happens. I was told you had this big, like, um, booming voice, and um, like, I mean, it, it, it yeah. is, but I was expecting like some, like, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. like, I wanted to be like blown out of my. <laughs> Just give me time; but... I'll warm up. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> All right, so let's do. I'll do the introduction now, and we'll get started. How's that awesome. sound? You guys ready? Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Hey, guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. I'm very excited today. We are with Adam Lemna and Manny Gomez to talk about their comic, Relic Hunter. I recently reviewed the first issue. It is Adam's, like, baby. He started the book, and um, uh, Manny contributed a story to the first issue. And as of issue two, they will be co-writing along with um, Adam continuing on the art chores. So today we're going to talk to them a little about comics and uh process and relic hunter and all kinds of fun stuff so thanks so much for being here guys thank you really yeah, excited thank you for having me. so um adam you started relic hunter and um i as i said in my review like it is a really great name like i feel like oh, you could just true. print money off of that i see it on your shirt you know um i was a huge tomb raider fan a huge fan of uh top cows tomb raider um and um, even though I never played the video game, like I'm not oh, a video game person. Is, like I I feel like it's my age, like I feel, or maybe just my stupidity. Like I'm like, like Atari was like for me and like beyond Pong, you guys can have it. So, um, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so, um, you know, what, like what inspired you to want to make Relic Hunter in the first place? Like, was there some big uh, inspiration or what oh, happened? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm a huge, huge fan. Always have been a huge fan of like Dungeons and Dragons and fantasy art. And uh, I was a big fan of the Savage Sword of Conan, which is like sort of one of my favorite um, comic books, I guess comic magazines and uh was always a huge like fantasy novel fan so when i wanted to i had done a few things i had done like shorter comics and i when i wanted to do uh a longer form thing i wanted to do it set in sort of a fantasy world sort of the real world not exactly but uh i also studied history and a whole bunch of different things and so um this felt really right for me and then I also wanted to learn how to do uh, better figure work and draw action and really figure out like the storytelling end of things. And I thought that doing something that was going to be big and 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 oversized in both, you know, the size of the book, but also in terms of like the the melodrama of the story, um, the pulpiness of it, um, 
gives you a lot of room to play around with it. And so that's, that's initially what drew me to wanting to make like a sword and sorcery um, type of book. And I'm also I'm a huge fan of Indiana Jones and, uh, and Tomb Raider and Uncharted and all of that stuff. And uh, so that, that definitely played into, you know, how I wanted to put the story together and uh yeah man uh you know of course there was also like uh the way that i released it was through next panel press and that was a really fun thing as well because you know i'd seen i'd seen rick and craig and uh and eli at that point doing next panel press and i was like this is the perfect way to release a comic book for me because as an editor like a tv editor i don't have like tons of time to draw and so, but I figured like one page a week would be like right on. <laughs> you know? So for pe people who don't know, One Panel Press is like an Instagram comic book thing where uh, creators just release one panel of their story at a time. Is that how that <laughs> well, works? Well, it's, uh, it's Next Panel Press, sorry. Oh, Next um, Panel, but okay. it's Yeah, and, uh, and so it's like one page, one page a week. And mm -hmm. uh, it's something that, you know, before you join you you know you kind of have to agree like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna release one page a week you know to do it and so you have to kind of build up some some strips in in your hopper and then um and then yeah we release like you know five or six different strips i think there's like gosh there's like 15 or 16 guys now in next panel press and we all have sort of like different points where we're at and different stories <laughs> And uh, so it's really fun. Like right now I'm not releasing anything because I'm working on the second issue with Manny and uh, yeah, it's just kind of crazy right now, man. Do you find, um, so it, it, if you're uh, working on like a second issue that isn't necessarily um, contingent on being published through next panel press, does that, do you feel like that has changed the format of the book? Um, the way you approach the format of the book? Oh, absolutely in the creation of the book this time it's much more uh traditional in terms of the way that that we've been working um you know we wrote a script we revised the script we're doing roughs we did turnarounds for the new characters bios all sorts of stuff and we've been working um with some other folks as well who uh who've contributed some time that have really helped make the book a lot better you know friends who can look at things and and help us out and um i'm really excited to do it this way because it's a little bit more like traditional comic making whereas i the one thing that i did love about doing the first issue through next panel press and i will release the second issue through next panel press but it'll be concurrent with the book release um so you'll be able to see it but it'll take you know, 33 weeks for it to, uh, to go because the new story is 33 pages. Um, but, uh, the nice thing about that is every page, it teaches you that every page has to have beginning, middle and end. It needs to continue the story, but it also needs to have a cliffhanger. And so it's a really interesting storytelling method for, for a comic book. And it, it does change the way that you think about things because there aren't those pages where you can really allow it to breathe, which I think that we definitely get that in Relic Hunter too. Like we have moments of that are a little bit more quiet, whereas it's action, 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 action all throughout Relic Hunter issue one, <laughs> because it's, because it's literally like you're releasing it every week and you want people to keep coming back. So you got to have that cliffhanger every single time. Yes. So, um, so what made you take it to Cosmic Lion Productions? How did that? How did publishing know. through with Eli happen? Well, it was really cool because when I finished the story, I had talked to Manny about doing a backup story. I had all these pinups that were coming in, and I reached out to Eli and I sort of talked to him. I was like, you know, what is this whole like Kickstarter thing? Because I was going to do Kickstarter and I wanted to get some advice from him. I talked to Rocco Jerome, you know, I got some advice from him and I was like, you know, I know that Eli is going to be 
starting his own his own publishing company um why don't you know like so i went to eli and i said you know would you like to uh you know when it's ready would you like to put out relic hunter and he was like he was like i mean i would love to but i want to see this story so i sent him the you know the finished story i sent him like a mocked up pdf of everything and um i was kind of like nervous that weekend you know manny and i were talking that weekend and i was like <laughs> I don't know if it's going to go. And if it doesn't, then I'll just kickstart it and that'll be totally cool. But, uh, but he liked it. And uh, we, we ended up putting it out through Cosmic Lion and it's been nothing but amazing because Cosmic Lion is like a family. It's not, <laughs> you know, it's a weird, weird family. And, uh, you know, we all sort of like build each other up and it's, it's really great. I mean, there's so much talent in there. I just feel so, so grateful and so humbled to be a part of that. It's like, you know, if you think about like the, the best indie publishers right now, uh, you know, there's cosmic lion, there's, there's floating world, there's fanographics, there's silver sprocket, but that's yeah. like, they're like the elites, man, you know? And that's, I feel really, really grateful to be a part of Cosmic Lion Productions. And of course, you know, obviously Eli is my friend, but I don't think he would have had a problem saying no if the book was not like no, no. up to snuff. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, I have firsthand knowledge that uh, Eli doesn't have any problem churning people down. So I, not not for me personally, but just from... Uh, <laughs> Thanks. No, man, I can't. No, wait. but I, I, I don't he have should be discerning, yet, and I can't no, wait to get a copy of it. And that is not a slam at all. I think I don't think like you should take things for granted. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like just because someone's your friend and you come up with a book. I mean, it's like he is a publisher and he does have quite an impressive catalog. And you know, I'd like yes. to think that there is some sort of uh, thought process that goes into uh, the books that he chooses. And he is really exploding right now. So um, um, congratulations to him. And although I may be like a, a, I don't know, like a quasi fringe relative, I am part of the Big Bang family, or I mean, part of the Cosmic Lion family as they did publish my Big Bang book. So um, yes, you yes. are part of the so. family, dude. It's so cool. I mean, that's the thing that I love about it too, is that it's not just artists. It's people who are storytellers. It's people who have, ideas you know and cosmic lion is also going to be doing music and film and all these other things you know it's it's more than just comics it's it's like a collective of like-minded you know creators yeah and it's it's so awesome because it's it's iron sharpening iron i see what you do i see what rick does i see what kevin catalan does i see what you know eli is doing and it makes me work a hundred times harder to make my books that much better i mean like i you know it's sort of it's sort of crazy because this started for me as sort of like a hobby during the pandemic to like <laughs> you know you, you take up time because i was at first i was working from home and i had like a ton of extra time because i wasn't driving back and forth to la every day um and so that was great and then it's become this thing where it's like I, I couldn't stop if I wanted to. Like, I have to have that time to sit down and draw each day to to get that sort of fulfillment. And the days that I don't get to draw, I'm like, Jesus, I just want to... Ah, just I get know, me to, it's, to the board. You know, um, and, and from your comments, um, I, it's, I, I think that not a, people, a lot of people know that, but I am an artist myself. But um, um, I can relate to that so much. You know what I mean? Like, artistic inspiration always hits me at the wrong time. Like I'll be at work and I'll be like, like visualizing like this page in my head. Like I have it like totally like it's happening in my mind and I cannot wait to like bust out the door and go home and do it. And then you get home and you're like, fuck this. There's no way I'm doing that. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like, hard to be dinner, an artist. I gotta walk the dog. I want to yeah. relax for five minutes. Yeah. I, I know. Crazy. Yeah. I know. So, you know, it's funny. So, uh, you know, uh, when you talk about, you know, the, the pan, the pandemic was really good for a lot of comic book artists. Yep. I mean, it, it introduced me to like, I, it introduced me to the kayfabe crowd. It, 
you know, got me working on uh, Darkest Image, whatever the second yeah. one was. It's like, you know, and like the Batman, Same. Um, Yerwa, and, you Same. know, meeting all these people, starting my channel. Um, you know, yeah. it was through a lot. Yeah. It was like a huge comfort. You know, it just like the things lined up. My sister started sending me a bunch of my old comic collection from, um, you know, my dad's attic during the pandemic. And I found the cartoonist kayfabe channel and I'm like, oh, I can totally rip this off, you know, with um, my collection <laughs> and, and be the, you know, the, uh, I can't believe it's not butter um, kayfabe channel. And um, <laughs> I love that. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, somebody's got to ride the coattails, so it might as well be me. It's like, I have this amazing collection just sitting there. So might, yeah. but not only that, yeah. but it just like, it was such a comfort and like it reconnected to me to my love of John Byrne. It reconnected me to my love of like eighties X-Men and just like, you know, so many great things. And then of course, you know, but I mean, I've but like, I came to LA, I'm making this about myself. Sorry guys. But um, I came to LA <laughs> to, you know, like act, <laughs> act and make comics, like the two stupidest uh, goals in life. You know what I mean? It's like, why not? I might as well throw in winning Powerball, Ball while I'm at it, because <laughs> I feel like it's just as realistic as a goal. So I've always been kind of doing that, and um, I think that you know, as long as you just keep doing it, and or I don't know, I got off topic here, but anyway, yeah, the pandemic was good. It got people very productive, and then when it ended, we all had to go back to work. We have way less time to focus on our projects, but we still have that fire and that desire. So yeah. we got to make it happen by hook or by crook, and we are. I mean, that's it. You know, uh, yep. I get a lot of work done after my wife and my son go to bed at night. And, you know, then I'm up late drawing. I'll get up early in the morning. You know, that's just what you do when you want to accomplish goals that are <laughs> difficult and require you to, like, prioritize other parts of your life, you know. But it it, it means that it'll take longer to get things done, but it'll get done. And, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, you just got to keep chipping away at it for anybody that's out there that is thinking about doing something like this. I would definitely say do it because you learn so much about you learn a lot about yourself. You learn about storytelling. You learn about, yeah. you know, what it feels like to finish something. And it's re it's really an excellent creative uh, outlet, at least for me, you know. No, I think like, um, so, uh, uh, no, it's quite an accomplishment. You know, I mean, it's like you have Relic Hunter number one and that is an accomplishment. So uh, congratulations Absolutely. on that. So what, like, um, you know, given the, I guess the square bound format of that would seem to be like next panel press or whatever. Um, like in my review, I pointed out that like, it reminded me of like uh, this old like punk rock uh a zine called uh, Maximum Rock and Roll because it's like black and white and it's got and I also said like I felt like the cover like kind of reminded me of Playbill you know yeah the, um, yeah. yeah but I don't know if the, I doubt that my wife but... totally when you said that Michael my wife was like it totally does and I was like you know I never really thought about that but when Eli and I decided to choose that yellow it just popped what I wanted to do was I wanted to have an image on the cover. First of all, I was inspired by Jim Rugg, who, you know, says you you got to have something on the cover that's going to jump out at, at somebody. And so I, I knew that I wanted to homage this particular image from uh, JRJR's Daredevil run. I loved it. Um, so I so I did this and Misimo did the most incredible color work on it. And turned it around so fast. I mean, it was like, I, we were like, hey, can you do this? And it was like the next day. <laughs> you know, it was so amazing. Yeah, and Missy Mo is otherworldly. Like, like, yeah. And then I was like, oh, I have a couple of notes. And he was, and then it was like an hour later, everything was perfect. <laughs> you know, yeah, I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. Yeah, um, he did a really great job. That is a, an iconic cover. And it, it went... I don't think this is the first time I've heard that it was an homage to the John Romita Jr., but I was shocked when I heard that because usually uh, homages or or swipes, if you will, stand out like yeah. a sore thumb. And um, I'm a huge fan of John Romita Jr., and I did not place it at all. So, I mean, oh, in a way, that's kind of a good thing, you know, because it's <laughs> yeah. like, 
his especially with a first here i am uh uh like critiquing you but um like a first issue cover like Jeez. you can you want it to be iconic into itself you know it's yep. like that's that's why i think like um homages like uh like when I was planning Big Bang, like Gary Carlson was like, I don't really like homages. Like a lot of people wanted to do homages and we snuck a couple of them in there. But, um, but I feel like they have to be like, like very important. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, issue two of the recent Alpha Flight series. And I love Dan Panosian, but he homaged Burns number one cover and it wasn't very good. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you're going to do an homage, make it freaking amazing. You in really have to make it your own as well. It has to and be I think your you own did style. That. And that's the thing. I mean, like, you know, I knew that I wanted to... Uh, what I loved was the way the the way that the figure fills the frame in, mm-hmm. the, in the JRJR piece. And so I knew that that was like... It, it looked really hard. It looked really tough. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I really want to have something that's going to pop out at you. But I also, you know, like, I don't want it to look so much like it that it's like an exact replica you know and but i didn't mind doing it because the book itself has wears its uh influences on its sleeve and i mean i have after Busemas all throughout there i mean like i'm totally open about the fact that like i study but i go through and you can see like this is my like one of my I keep it right next to me, first of all. And it's like, and I always am going through and finding like, you know, panels that I like or storytelling bits that I like so that I can either so that it inspires me or even in some cases so that I can homage it if if I feel like it's like, this is an image that I love and I want you to love it too. And that's why, that's why I'll, I'll homage something. And I, but I totally understand the idea of wanting it to be your own thing. But I felt like this is such a book that's rooted in my own personal fandom that I didn't mind that. And now the thing about it is like, now it's become part of the aesthetic of the book as well, I think. Um, And so there, there will be a couple of homages in issue two, but most of it is, is pretty much, all new sort of like from me, which, you know, I wanted to keep a little bit of that aesthetic, but I think issue two is going to like surprise a lot of people because it's a very different story um, than the first issue. And, but we're trying to do something that, that hasn't been done like a whole lot successfully. And so hopefully it can be successful. Yeah. Yes. Well, It's, um... uh, it's an interesting thing because, you know, spoilers if you're if you haven't read relic hunter uh the first issue at the very end um he gets thrown through a portal into 1984 new york and so that's where the second issue takes place is in 1984 new york it picks up directly it it, it picks up actually even before the portal opens up in new york there's a little sequence that happens and during that sequence the portal opens up and we see a thief come through and uh that's all i'm gonna tell you but it's a fish out of water story it is you know it's inspired by movies like highlander and terminator oh and, yeah and um john and, carpenter uh, movies yeah, yeah john was, carpenter what movies that, yeah i mean like one, what is that one i'm thinking about uh the my favorite john carpenter movie the you know the oh, oh we, uh, we are they live, totally they escape from new york is yeah. huge yeah. in it um you know that's a huge part of it uh abel ferrara miss, abel ferrara movies yeah, yeah like miss 45, 45 that's a huge influence on it i mean king of new york you know like exactly so like yeah and that's the funny thing it's great that manny's you know chiming in here because like that's one of the reasons that i wanted to work with manny first of all we had a great experience writing the backup for uh for the for this particular first issue but beyond that it manny and i have been friends for a long time and we have a lot of really similar um a lot of similar sensibilities yeah sensibilities exactly there it is uh, when it comes to when it comes to like influences and that sort of thing, and so it felt very natural 
Plus, it's also, I wanted to bring on a writer for this one. I mean, like, I'm an artist, you know. I can write. I have written, you know, many, many things, uh, <laughs> uh, many unproduced screenplays over the years. Uh, so I, I do write, but I mean, I wanted to have somebody else's voice in it as well. And I wanted it to feel more, I wanted to do it like a real comic book, man. Yeah. I wanted to bring on my friends that, I enjoy being around and make it with them. You know, I think, I think it also, you know, um, like, for, for, you know, making comics is very um, isolating and lonely and I, it can be very fun and fulfilling and just make it so much better to have a collaborator. You know, even if, yes. even if you don't have a collaborator, like to have somebody to bounce your ideas off and stuff, um, you know, because I think oftentimes you know, especially like as an indie person. And it's like, I, I think a perfect example is like uh, uh, someone you love, like who has like made some of your favorite comics, like through Marvel or DC or whatever. And then they go off on their own and decide that they don't need an editor and surprise, guess what they do. You know what <laughs> I mean? So that's a great point. <laughs> yeah. And it's true. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. that's one of the big things that I'm, I, I have someone who's helping us edit this time and uh and eli of course will also be editing as well and um it's made the story better it's made yeah. the you know it's made the through lines more clear it's made the characters you know more clear their motivations more clear and uh it just overall i think it strengthened the book to you know what we initially came up with manny and i i think was really great you know but yeah. it's always helps to have other eyes on it and yeah. speaking to that like being part of next panel press we have a group chat being part of clp we have a group chat you know ghost agents we have a group chat you know what i yeah. mean communication and, is very important and so like i share my in progress stuff with everybody all the time to get yeah. feedback and that you know that helps make the books better. And that's the thing, man. My bottom line for everything that I do is I want to tell this story, but I want to tell it in the most clear, straightforward, and artful way that we can possibly tell it. You know, like, uh, we're batting for, like, you know, uh, who name your name your favorite storyteller in comics, you know? that's That's what we're going for. You know, I think, um, and that's a perfect segue for a little something, um, you know, um, I, uh, you're a film editor, and I would think that that, you know, editing, We, t I, I've talked since we're talking about editing, it is so important. And I learned so much um, editing such a huge book like Big Bang. You know, it's like you want so much. And sometimes you want certain things for style or just for whatever. And, you know, it, you just have to know when to trim the fat and when something's not working and how to make it work. And, you know, having a collaborator like Manny is like perfect for something like that. You know what I mean? Because Absolutely. like, as, as you know, sitting there as an artist, we do have those questions. You know what I mean? Like, this is brilliant, or is it brilliant? Does this work? Does this not work? Am I deluding myself? Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> nine times out of ten, we are. So, <laughs> I mean, we're artists. We live in a world of delusion. That's you know. Yeah, I think the fact that uh, yeah, yeah, it's deluding ourselves is like the definition of being an artist. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, have so you... it's been great. Having yeah. Manny on. And he did such a good job on the first story. It, it made me laugh. It was, a, you know, Rick's artwork was incredible. And I think that people really responded to it too. You know, it was one of those things where I wanted to have like a, like a Munden's bar kind of backup story in every, in every issue, because I, I, I've always thought that was like one of the most smart things that that Tim Truman did was having all these other storytellers and artists come through and, you know, make a little bit of money and get a little bit of shine and do something really interesting within the context of the world that he had created. And I think that that's like, that's brilliant. That's what I want to see. It's like, I don't know, like when somebody sends you a pinup or something like that, where they've where they've done something with your characters, that to me is like the most exciting thing is like seeing somebody else play with the character. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my yeah. god, you, you care about it enough to like put time into it? This is insane. 
Yeah, that is true. I know because it's like I like I, I've talked about the fact that like it doesn't matter how famous you get or like how how you know many copies of your own book you sell. Like all these motherfuckers still just want to sit around and draw Batman and Wolverine. And, you know, so it's, it's like <laughs> it is true. <laughs> And I'm one of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. It doesn't matter. I mean, that's the thing about comics is that it's a universal storytelling language. You know, you see it in every kind of culture, you know, telling telling pictures through Im- or telling stories through pictures. And it's, you know, it's a language in and of itself. And uh, I think it's so cool because it's literally the one art form that can be anything it can be instructional it can be uh exhilarating it can be you know it can bring you down it can bring you up it can teach you things it's just really uh it's pretty fascinating and i mean obviously like you know you can get some of that with other things but i think it sort of encompasses the best parts of filmmaking and storytelling like uh, traditional like you know, prose storytelling, and it also requires you to, because it's short, it's like making a short film, which is more difficult than, like, telling a short story in a, in a clear and artful way, and having a beginning, middle, and end is actually more difficult than telling a longer story, because in a longer story, you have the opportunity to build your characters and your situations, and guide your reader through that, so you really have to distill all of this stuff down and make it feel like you're not getting archetypes. And that's, that's the fun of, of comics, I think. Yeah. I I like um, having worked on like some anthologies and stuff. I'm, I'm a huge form or a huge fan of the, the short story or the like little vignettes or the anthology stories (laughs) and anthologies traditionally don't sell that well for some reason, but I think it's so like fun, you know what I mean? To just sit there and read a book and like have a complete story and just, you know, I I mean, of course some anthologies are superior to others. Like some just feel like such fluff and thrown away. Like, um, but the Zeno one that just came out from Oni Press is um, oh, very know. good, very good for the most part. They have like these amazing Matt Lisniewski covers. Um, I bought it because Nick Cagnetti uh, contributed to oh, it. Oh, awesome. nice. It's Love sort it. of like, it's like the black mirror of comic books. And, um, you know, so it talks about, you know, technology and cautionary tale and blah, blah, blah. Um, things like mm-hmm. that. But, you know, it's really hit or miss. You know, some are genius and some are just like, why bother you know what i mean but i guess that's with anything right yeah i hear that the uh i just read an article on uh on the comics journal about the uh the new penthouse comics that just came out and apparently I've that's read that, yeah. fantastic and it's like it's an mm-hmm. anthology it's uh four or five stories but they brought in incredible artists they got great writers and they really put some money behind the book it's really pretty fascinating man um i'm looking forward to picking it up actually yeah i mean as a gay man my interest in penthouse comics is not super high but um it's not did, yeah yeah but that said i was gonna say like i collected a lot of the first um old penthouse comics because they had like jason pearson you know right. um, adam hughes yeah. and like some of my great artists but like Aside from, you know, a little bit of uh, what you would expect in a t- penthouse comics, they actually were really good. So yeah. um, I, I actually do want to kind of pick up the new penthouse and see what it's if it's good. The color, yeah, the color was amazing. It, so, you know, they've got they've got really interesting, you know, like they tell you, obviously the sex part of it is there. But I mean, it's like whatever. I That's not what I'm going for. I'm going to see like. They're giving sort of like free reign to some creators to do something adult, which is not something that we see a lot in more mainstream comics. And, uh, you know, something that I'd like to see more in mainstream comics. I think that people are mature enough now to deal with having a little bit more adult material in their comics. And I think that that's why independent comics are so much more popular now. Then they then they've been like more widely popular. Obviously, the pandemic definitely helped that. The internet helped that because people were locked up and they needed things to entertain them, you know. And so, like, they found 
comics, but now there's a lot of adults reading comics and I want to see adult stories in comics, you know, ones that people actually resonate with. Oh, you can get all the sex you need in comics by reading Eric Larson's Savage Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Oh, I love Eric, man. So I just saying lifelong yeah. fan i i love him it, it's funny yeah. no but i really do enjoy his books but um i just sometimes it takes me out because it feels like there's always one page that's like huh <laughs> <laughs> well that's but eric then, being eric man yeah that's it. i know you can't um you can't blame an artist for being an artist right no that's it man that's it and i mean I don't know. I'm so excited about what we're all doing here. And I'm so excited to see what everybody's coming up with in 2024. It's uh, it's going to be a big year for all of us, I think. Well, I'm glad you said what you said, because now I'm going to submit to you your first um, full frontal uh, nudity uh, Relic, <laughs> Hunter, Relic Hunter pinup. <laughs> I love it. Please do. Are you kidding me? That would be so good i mean i one of my favorite things i am a i am a a filmmaker who loves transgressive films and loves pushing people's buttons manny knows this you know yeah, same i'm the same rock one. i love hard yeah, i'm a big fan of you know free expression and uh i think that people need to be exposed to this kind of stuff and so for me like that would be Anything that can subvert even what I'm trying to do, I'm going to put it front and center because, like, that's the whole thing. Like, let's let's not only praise what we love, but let's let's critique it. You know what I mean? And let's let's build it. Let's build it up. Let's break it down and build it up again. You know what I mean? And I think that that's really important. And I, you know, you joke, but I, you know, it's true. I would love to see stuff like that because it's like I wasn't joking. No, yeah. <laughs> I, I want you to do it, <laughs> you know, like, that's the thing. Like, I want people to feel like when they get a copy of my books, whether or not they are like a fan of the story that I'm telling or whatever, they can, I want them to see that anything can go. And that's sort yeah. of like, you know, the story itself, anything can go. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, Manny and I was like, there's no, there's, no, we're not going to put any kind of like, impose any kind of rules on ourselves because we're only constrained by our imagination. And uh, if something works, you know, I don't care where the idea comes from. That's yeah. the way that I'm in filmmaking as well. It's like, yeah. you know, I'm in a room with somebody. I don't care if it's the guy delivering the coffee. If he has an idea that's good, I want to hear it because yeah. my goal is to make the best thing, whatever it is, film, book story whatever that i can possibly make and i can't do that on my own that's not you know like i can do something cool on my own of course but like if you really want to get to a level where you can be connecting with a, a lot of people you need to have sounding boards you need to have you need to be open to ideas and you need to be accepting that you may not be the smartest person in the room you know yeah, sometimes being the smartest person in the room is listening to other people, you know? And yeah, that's... no, it's true because, like, uh, it's weird because it's, like, I... I think I'm a pretty good writer, but I feel like, uh, like, uh, I'm, like, sometimes, like... I'm good at dialogue and great at coming up with ideas, but like, that's why I love the short stories. Cause it's like hard to yeah. pull off like a very yeah. epic story, but you know, sometimes like there's one project I'm working on and I was really hung up on the story. And then I was watching an interview with a creator and they just gave me like the full, like a light bulb went off in my head. And I was like, Oh, that's my story right there. You know what I mean? I love those so moments. Yeah, you do never know where your inspiration is going to come from. And if you do have an idea and you're stuck on it, sometimes you just need to like put it on the back burner and wait for the totally. water So many boil. times when before I was working from home, driving back and forth, that so many, that's that's where I would think. Yeah. That's where I would get my ideas. And so like that's also a thing too. You know, like now it's like when I'm taking a shower or when I'm walking the dog. You know, whenever I'm away from it, and that's that's a practice that I've built into pretty much everything that I do. I like to create something, step away from it for a day, come back and look at it again, and then revise. And I feel like that is the best 
possible way to do it because then you're putting fresh eyes on something and you can see like sometimes in the moment you're like oh this is amazing the, oh, yeah. the story that i'm writing this is the best moment and then you come back to it and you're like what the f was i thinking <laughs> you know and so uh you know i've applied that you know i apply that to the movies that i cut uh to the tv that i cut apply it to the stories that i write and i think that it's a good practice for anybody but uh you know, maybe it doesn't work for everybody. You have to do whatever works for you, right? Absolutely, I know. man. I know. I'm. It's funny because it's like I'm. Uh, you know, I. You need to follow your own advice. It's like, uh, you know, when you do have those ideas, when you're like, it's so smart to like write down those ideas. And I'm so the person who never writes down those ideas. Like <laughs> I used to do stand up comedy, and they're like oh, carry a cassette recorder and a notebook and write down your jokes and record yourself and stuff. And I'm like, I, I just like used to like cringe at the thought of like, who are these people who like sit there and like, okay, I'm going to go through my 400 hours of recorded jokes and try to come up with something or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's just like whatever process works for you, you have to yeah. make it work for yourself. So I don't know. So Manny, just, is this your is this your first big comic book writing thing? I I, I know you've written for like uh, monkeys fighting robots and stuff. Have you written many other like comics? No, I mean not for for the, most of my life, I've come at it from like a critical point of view or like an interviewer, you know. Like, uh, but uh, my first story was uh, like you. I did a story for uh, Darkest Image, uh, and uh, I really enjoyed that process. So, um, you know. Adam and I became friends, like you said. We were, you know, we're shooting the shit. I, I mean, I've been a fan of Adam since the beginning. I, uh, I like to say I, I was one of his first, uh, first people to ever buy art from him, and it's hanging on my wall. He did a Robocop nice. that I'm looking at right now in my living room. So, uh, I mean, and I love Relic Hunter. I had gotten the ash can when, you know, when that was put out. And like him, I love all that kind of stuff, punk rock, heavy metal imagery, Dungeons & Dragons. So when and i even forget how how it, it came about that that you asked me to to start writing it it just seems like it just happened organically and before i knew yeah. it we were just <laughs> spitballing back ideas and all of a sudden we're working on a comic book you know and like it, it was it was super quick the back and forth and like it, it seemed to happen like overnight and before we, we knew it yeah. we're working on a script and writing it and, and it was fun i mean i've always wanted to write comics i've comics have been the medium that i love above everything else i mean you know i love music i love punk rock i love movies but comics have been with me since I was a, a kid. I mean, I think some of my earliest memories are buying comic books and reading comic books and on family vacation. So uh, I've always had a strong passion. I just, you know, I always, I was so caught up in, in, in writing about them that I didn't really think that I could write them. And, uh, and you know, having the chance to write that story in Darkest Image made me realize, like, you know, I, I probably absorbed through osmosis or whatever it may be, you know, some kind of comics DNA and uh, and I, you know, I tried writing that that story, and you know, it came out great. And then Adam asked me to write a backup for Relic Hunter issue one, and uh, you know, that came out great. Obviously, a, a large part of that was Rick's incredible art that he did, which I mean, was blowing me away. And then I started writing it, and I love it, man. Uh, Adam and I have, I'd almost say it's it's like our own Marvel method kind of way where like, <laughs> it, you know, it, yeah. it starts, it starts almost off like an outline and then it kind of grows into like a script yep. and then it kind of morphs again. Like it's, it's, it's always very fluid, which is something that I like about the creative process. And I like the collaboration that we have and like that, that just gets right. me more excited to work on it. And you said we're, we're rule. You want to have rules, but you also want to break those fucking rules. I mean, that's the exactly. punk rock kid in me, you know, like, and, and punk rock, you, you create your own rules and then you fucking break them the next day. You know what I mean? And then you, you know, that's how it's like you create and smash, create and smash, create and smash until you have what you want. And I think that's what we've done with the book. And like, it's Absolutely. better for it. Uh, I've become a better writer for it. I, I mean, you know, working on this has made me look at comics in a completely different way. Uh, especially like Adam said, like the people we have helping us edit this now has made me realize like how important every panel and every page is, you know, like the, the importance of the page turn, you know, like that is critical and vital because, you know, you want someone to have an emotional reaction when they turn the page, whether it's shock, whether it's like, like the, the want to keep turning those pages, you know, it's like that, yeah. that page turn and where it happens is very important. Something that I didn't really think about before, you know, until I started writing and creating comics. So, so I, I've loved the process and, uh, um, 
like Adam said, what we've got cooking for issue two is fucking wild. <laughs> and uh, I think, and uh, and then even going forward, we've got even more wilder ideas. And uh, I think it's going to really blow back some fucking minds, man. You know, and, and I mean, basically, this is a comic that I would be reading if I wasn't working on it. So that's probably the best thing I could say about it. Yeah, it's, it must be an interesting perspective for you to sort of uh, not yeah. be on the ground floor and sort of come in and just uh, ride the wave with Adam there. Um, uh, but I, the way you guys set up the second issue um, has me really excited for it because uh, I think it's very smart to like drastically change the direction, yeah, uh, you know, setting of the book because um, like, honestly, like, you know, it makes me want to come back. You know what I mean? Like, oh, cool. Like, I can't wait to see what you guys do there. So um, I will definitely be on board for that. Um, I do have to wrap in a few minutes because I don't have a ton of time. But um, so do you guys want to talk about anything else before we wrap this up? Um, yeah, uh, I've got a uh, I've I'm collaborating uh, with an L.A. poet, um, Regina Gomez. Um, she's got a book called Miss Romantic coming out. Um, no a, relation. No, no relation to Manny. <laughs> no relation. No relation. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Adam just yeah. likes people with the last name Gomez. <laughs> I was say, you have and, an Adam's, uh, fam I did, Adam's I did family the cover fetish. For that. And... I'm helping her um, edit and and lay it out, and uh, so I'll have those. I'll be at WonderCon at the end of this month. I should have that new book. I'll have Relic Hunter. Um, I'll have prints. I'll have all sorts of stuff, and uh, I'll be there with Eli um rick should be there so you can get all your cosmic lion needs when you uh when you come to wondercon well i i know i just saw that wondercon was happening uh this morning so it's like oh i yeah. should probably try to make it to that so definitely come out man that would be great i know you know misimo will be there eli rick ryan chris all the all the clp folks the, u the usual suspects Yes. Yeah. Be great to see you, man. Um, but yeah, follow me at uh on Instagram at, at Adam Lemna. Follow Next Panel Press at Next Panel Press. Um both on uh Facebook and Instagram and uh at CLP. I think that's what it is, at, at Cosmic Lion Productions on Instagram and Cosmic Lion Productions on Facebook and Cosmic Lion Productions.com. That's where you can buy the book. Yeah, you you can follow yeah. me on Insta Instagram at a uh, underscore. I'd buy that for a dollar underscore. I'm always posting about comics I'm reading. A lot of dollar bin finds, which is one of my my biggest passions. That's another thing Adam and I have in common. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can you can also catch me uh, co-hosting a lot of episodes of the Comic Lounge with Ryan Balcom. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just did a couple of panels at uh, Indie Creator Con, which were amazing. Uh, first time I ever did a panel in front of people, and it was. It was great. So those should be posted uh, on the Monkeys Fighting Robot channel sometime soon. And uh, yeah, and you know, make sure you guys uh, keep your eyes open for when Relic Hunter issue two drops because it'll be sometime <clears throat> this summer. And uh, it'll be June. Get... June is what we're we're aiming yeah. for. Um, Heroes Con. That's yes. That's the... I'll be attending Heroes Con too. So um, I, I where think is you, Heroes you're Con? To... North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's the goal is to get it out by yeah. by heroes. So when is Heroes Con? Uh June 14th, 15th, and 16th, I believe. Yeah. Interesting. Just because I think I know someone who lives in North Carolina. So I'm like, do it. Maybe. Do it, maybe. I'm like, I <laughs> I've never been, and I hear it's great. So yeah. yes, I want to go and promote my baby Big Bang. Speaking of which, I'm still waiting on uh, Manny and Ryan's uh, review of my Big Bang comic book. So yeah, um, we we, I, we we're we're gonna get back to uh, filming uh, next week. We were gonna film some stuff this week, but we were both. I thought I was getting con crud there for a minute, but I think I was just tired because oh, con crud. Uh, I, 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 yeah, you know, like I, I I like two days ago, I woke up and I felt like absolute shit, and I was like, Fuck. I, I, I know I saw some it. pictures from IC three, and uh, like I saw a couple people with masks on, and I was like, oh, it just gave me such a horrible flashback to masks. I was like, are we still doing this? I guess we are. <laughs> some. But, but I think I'm good. So, yeah. So we're gonna get back to filming videos this week. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll talk to him about it and, and see if we can add one that that one to to the roster real soon because I do want to talk about it. I loved it. Love the trading cards, man. You know, like man, I literally have my 
the one that Gary Carlson oh, signed, I have it on my desk here, like, you know, next to my mouse. So, like, I have the uh, poster that Jim Rugg did hanging in my living room, too. So, so I'm, that know. was a great project. Yeah, and I'm stoked, man. Jim's cover yeah. is fantastic for it. It yeah. is. I know. I'm like, I'm still pinching myself that we got that. Like, it's it's amazing. That's what I love. Like, the whole, it, it is, like, like uh, a very, you know, like, you talk about the Cosmic Lion family or whatever. Because I was thinking about it. It's like, you know, arguably cartoonist kayfabe, um, you know, introduced me to this group. And I yep. feel like it was very much, like, tightly, you know, cartoonist kayfabe. But then I feel like it's more cosmic lion and it's like definitely grown and there's like these mm-hmm. branches and like, but totally. um, the one last thing I wanted to say is like, um, I'm so, yeah, like hats off to guys like you. And, you know, it's like, I was so happy to review your relic hunter. It's really good. I know I may have been a little critical in some points, but I'm not going to do cool. a review. That's completely ass kissing. I'm sorry. Um, that's where reviews are for. Right. But right. I, I don't think Adam that. and I would want that at all anyway. No, I just, no. I would much prefer people to actually critique what I'm doing yeah. and think about it. Yeah. But how are we going to get better? But uh, you said something about indie comics, and it's like, um, you know, m- or more people reading indie comics. And the reason is, is because they're arguably the best comics being made. You know what I mean? So many times, I haven't 100% given up on Marvel and DC, but a good review for Marvel or DC for me anymore is like, oh, that wasn't bad. You know what I mean? I, Whereas like the indie books or the self-published books or the Kickstarter books, I'm always like, yes, that's so freaking awesome. Dude, yeah. Some money well spent because it's like they cared, you know, they had to go through a lot to get it done. Whereas Marvel's like, oh, well, guess we got to keep our copyright. You know what I mean? So I yep, don't know. That's it. I mean, but there's anyway. a whole other conversation in there, but I mean, yeah. You know, when you give people the freedom to tell the stories that they want to tell or do the things that they want to do with the characters, then you're really you're really going to create something that people are going to respond to because art is authentic and it comes from for me like. I I make what I want to see, you know, you got to make what you want to see out there. I want to read the book, you know, I make the books I want to read. And that's, yep. you know, I hear, I hear that success, a lot. I and I, I was going to say, I hear that a lot. And I think that must be the secret sauce right there because so yeah, many man. people have said that a part of their inspiration to make comics was to make the comics that they wanted to read. And if you're lucky enough, a lot of other people want to read those too, you know, so that's it. Um, but I really, really, really enjoy talking to you guys. You're so freaking interesting. Like, I honestly could talk to you guys all day long. And um, I would love right. to do this again when Relic Hunter uh, 2 comes out. Because oh, for sure, man. M- Manny's, uh, you know, will have uh, uh, a lot more, um, you know, uh, skin in the game as far as... Oh, the, yeah, we'll have a lot know. more to talk about for sure. It's yeah. going to be uh, really exciting and... Uh, we would love to come back. It's going to be yeah, a lot man. of fun, man. Well, I will link all your socials in the description of the video. Although I don't think people read the description of the video, but um, and uh, you know how to get Relic Hunter, and um, hopefully I'll see uh, you at uh, WonderCon. That would be awesome. If not, everybody can find Adam at WonderCon and um, Manny at Heroes Con, and uh, get Relic Hunter and. You, you you said you don't have an exact you, you would like to get it out this year is that the game plan? yeah so relic country 2 will it will be out in june uh it should be out in time for heroes um you know we're we're closing we're closing in on things it's more that the, the script is done it's more than halfway you know penciled and we're uh we're cooking man yeah all right well sounds good Thanks so much, guys, for doing this. Um, it was a lot of fun. I wish you great success with Brolic Hunter. I think it's such an Thank amazing you. book and uh, definitely a hot uh, title, if nothing else. A uh, great name. <laughs> um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, you, I'm your audience. So, um, oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, brother. Thanks for being here. Everybody go out and support Relic Hunter. If you watch my channel, you know I'm the king of the hidden gems. And I'm always introducing people to 
books that they couldn't wouldn't have known about otherwise. So I'm happy to bring that to the forefront. And um, you guys are great. I love the work that you do. You're both amazing positive forces in the comic book scene. And I'm glad to finally get to meet you via Zoom and talk to you today. So um, thank you. Hopefully this will be up soon and I'll send you all the links and uh, keep on, keep it on. Thanks guys. And any parting shots before we wrap this up? I'm good. Thank you. You good? Yeah, I'm good, all man. Right. Just a million thanks for having us on, man. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Um, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe to my channel. Hit like, and I'll bring you more soon. All right. Bye, guys.